Father, we pray in Jesus' name that your son would come to be, be glorified among your people who have believed the good news. That you now live in us, that this resurrection life now is in us, and they that have been raised up together with you. Hallelujah. Batana Meshikara Naya Poro Soto Riba. Leng Jesse Zizarusa. Zeronaze Yosedeli Atakaya. Hallelujah. Ha 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 ha. Woo! Ma, 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 ganda, mbaro, sari. Now, I just tell you right now, I just tell you right now, this is the way it is. The, the earth is starving for the such gospel to be preached. I'm talking about the one that Jesus preached. I'm talking about the one that Paul preached. I'm talking about one that declares to us a complete salvation. Where old things have passed away, behold, all things are new. Not becoming new. The scripture doesn't say, behold, all things are passing away. Old things are passing away. It doesn't say, behold, old things are passing away. And all things are becoming new. Now, that's the way we believe it. That's the way many people believe it. And that's the way many people teach it. But that's not the Word of God. Reality of it is, if we began to preach what seems to be practiced, everyone would, well, hopefully, most people would rise up and say, wait a minute, that's, that's heresy, that's false doctrine. But what we want God's people to do is grab a hold of a living life in Christ Jesus. Listen, I'm telling you, if you grab a hold of this living life in Christ Jesus where the resurrection is now in you right now and it's not a day to celebrate and get Easter out of it because Esther has nothing to do with it. My goodness, Lord, help us. This, this is the resurrection. I mean, if you want to do anything that it's still a breach to call, just say Pesach or Passover. Shemekha Pesach. Rejoice, you know, joyful Passover. But it's not, it's more than that. But my goodness, don't bring paganism in it. Lord help us. I'm not going to get on that. I'm not going to get on that. But the Lord Jesus who wants to raise you up with the ability to go lay down your life for him. Show everybody around you and all the nations of the earth this resurrection life. It's you right now. Huh? But can't live out until you believe it. So long as people are on the borderline of believing, well, you know, I believe in Jesus. You do. Well, what's that doing for you? Do you believe in the transformation of life that he came to give everyone who would call upon his name? See, he, he would know Jesus as the Savior, but let me give you a, a singular word that more ad adequately describes the way we translate Savior. Okay? Deliverer. What on earth did he deliver you from? Exactly. And he translated us, and we de he delivered us. He, listen, he delivered us from what? He delivered us from the kingdom of darkness. And he translated us into what? What did he translate you? Where are you translate? What are you living? How are you living? If you just begin to take a hold of the faith that transforms and transfigures, then the reality of it becomes yours. As long as you're trying to have that which God has freely given, you can't have it. And that's, that's the catch. That's the trap. That's the monkey trap. Where you got your hand holding on to the banana, as it were, or the fruit or whatever, and you won't let go of the thing. You won't let go of what you believe or what you want to hold on to. And thus you're trapped. So just today, we just pray in Jesus' name, you just let go of everything. Let go of all of your beliefs. Let go of all, the th all your struggles. Let go of all the things you think it's got to be and just start believing God's Word. Nothing's going to alter or change Father's Word. It's a beautiful thing when God's people begin to understand His Word. Begin to read His Word as a good starting place. <laughs> begin to know His Word. And then begin to live out His Word. And it's not by mind, it's not by power, it's not by human ability. So many times we begin to minister, we begin to preach. People look inwardly. They're trying to solve these things for themselves. They're going to try and go do it. But the Lord has given to us something that goes far beyond human ability. He's given us the wonderful realms of the Holy Ghost. He's given to us His divine power. And His divine nature has come on the inside of us like a treasure. I have a treasure. If you have a treasure, you're going to spend it on the things that you want. It's just your treasure will bring to you power and ability to purchase things, to have things that otherwise you could not have. 
And it's not by means of anything other than the, the, the value of the treasure. We have a treasure that has been given to us. It's a resurrection life treasure. Nah. And the power and the glory of God is not of us. It's not of us. It's of Him. It's of the, see, we have now begun in the Spirit. You can be seated. We have begun in the Holy Ghost. As many people in this place is called upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, You have begun in the Holy Ghost. Now, here's what happens when Father creates a new heart and a new spirit. He gives to us an opportunity now to step into all the fullness of His glory. There are a lot of things, however, that will run interference. Religion will run interference. Say you can't. It will be a blockade. There will be things that you accept and believe. I mean, I tell you right now, one of the biggest tricks that Satan uses to keep God's people from moving in to this manifest glory of what he did when he made us a new creation, when he made us a new creature, possessors of the divine nature, is the spirit of offense. Satan uses that trick on more people. He uses unforgiveness because people are so selfish. They hang on to themselves. They're so selfish. Right? It's all about me. Even when you say, I love, a, I love fish. I like that one. You don't love fish. If you love the fish, you throw it back, right? <laughs> I love fish means I love me. It tastes good. That's what I want for me. Father's brought us into a place of giving, of servitude, of laying down our life, of coming to know something that those who study the law, the the Jewish community who study the law, they know what love looks like because they saw the glory of it on the pages of the Word in the face of the Word that they've read. However, they've seen very little of it. I don't know how much they've actually seen within the midst of the, the community of the New Covenant. And we're going to have to do something about that because God purposed to, provo to provoke Israel to jealousy through us. That those who understand and know what the glory of God looks like should be seen upon our lives. But we in unforgiveness because of selfishness, because we want it our way, because we want to view life through the, through the lens of our own truth. It's not God's truth. It's individual truth. That ain't going to make it for you. That isn't going to get you to the place that Father purpose for you to come which Jesus paid an amazing price I was so blessed yesterday watching CNN CNN preached the gospel throughout all the world yesterday in finding Jesus I was amazed to see how much accuracy was there there's things that I wouldn't have put in there there's things that you know but they preached Jesus CNN all the world heard the gospel yesterday CNN goes in all the world they broadcast that all over the world amazing what God uses I felt that they preached the gospel yesterday better than any of the Christian television programs it went on almost all day and it's really it's it's high time people that we just go ahead and step over into this life in Christ Jesus we try to stop trying to know things politically and economically and socially we start knowing things after a heavenly perspective by the Holy Ghost. We start seeing people different. We start seeing men and women around us, boys and girls around us, people, just humanity around us as those whom Christ died for and rose again. God so loved you. He gave His only begotten Son. It's not just God so loved me. I think there's a lot of people that just need to get that too. It's hard to show Father's love to others when you're not, you yourself aren't sure that He loves you. When you're still, you know, struggling with that idea. Today, you know, this morning, I'm just, I'm just so blessed, you know, that most of the, of, of the nation, most of the Western world, and some of the other nations around the world are recognizing this day was the day that Jesus raised up from the dead. that you and I could take it one step further and, and, and say, wait, wait, wait a minute. It's not an event that took place, two th just an event that took place 2,000 years ago. There's a living reality of it. Do you know that 
the reason that God poured out the Holy Spirit upon us and empowered us with all the fullness of His glory. Not just, not just some of His glory, but all the fullness of His glory. To baptize us, to immerse us in the presence of the Spirit of holiness, the Holy Spirit, the one who brings and makes manifest everything that the Word declares and speaks. Listen to me. Well, so that you and I could give witness to the resurrection, so that we could provide proof that Jesus raised from the dead. Somebody asks you, who are you and what do you do? You could say, oh, I'm one of the data points. I'm one, of, I'm, one of, I'm one of the proofs that God exists and that Jesus Christ is who he said he is and that he rose from the dead. See, when Jesus rose from the dead, he declared to all humanity and to all angels, to all creation, that no longer would men suffer under the penalty of an eternal death that they had been liberated from darkness and all who would come and accept the life that he gives. See, it's more than this concept of believing because believing is to exist, it's to believe it. It's not a religion, it's not an ideology, it's a transformation, it's a change. It's where you go from, from an earthly consciousness to a heavenly one. It's where you go from an earthly manner that is all entangled with worldly cares to a heavenly one. From hate to love. And there's so many people who say they know Jesus and they live under the, uh, under the power of hate. Which produces unforgiveness. You know, love never, for, never produced unforgiveness. Did you know that? Did you know that love only produces forgiveness? You know why? Love produces mercy. Mercy produces, produces forgiveness. People live under the strongholds of demonic power while they go around telling people about their religion. There's no light shining. Just another religion, another testimony to religion. I was praising God yesterday. At least CNN was pulling out some proofs, some carbon dated testing. You know, my goodness. If something, give me some proof. Anything. Well, Father, His purpose that you and I be proof providers, that we be witnesses, that we be firsthand eyewitnesses. Father doesn't allow secondhand witness information in the Word. Did you know that? You have to be an eyewitness to be a valid person to give testimony in the court of justice, in the court of heaven. Can you imagine that? Could you imagine that Father actually has an, for you a planned encounter with himself Jesus said if you just obey my words if you just obey what I'm telling you to do he brings, brings it down like this in John 14 just obey simply obey what I'm telling you to do and I'll come reveal myself to you now you get to be a first hand eyewitness he said and my father will also come with me and we'll make our dwelling place in you I think there's so many people believe somehow that that's in the future no, that's the resurrection life. The resurrection life, the transformation of nature, to where that we, we now actually enjoy a divine nature. A divine nature that produces love. A divine nature that produces kindness. Boy, would that ever be a, a breakthrough in the Christian community? Huh? That produces goodness. That, that is an overflow of the very life that God lives. I'm just, the quality of life. The life. Can you imagine living the life that God lives? This is the good news. Receive the life of Jesus. Which is to receive the life of God. Not the life of a prophet. Not the life of a good man. Not the life of a messenger from heaven. The life of the etern eternal God. Now what happens is we're stuck in a human frame having a real hard time wrapping our heads around that because my goodness, look at all the problems and the issues and whatever. Well, you're never going to get anywhere in doubt and unbelief because God, Father's not going to participate with doubt and unbelief. He's just not. He's not going to be able to do a miracle there. Did you know that? In Nazareth, his own hometown, he could not there do any miracles because of the unbelief. But you take the worst kind of person, take a Canaanite. What are you supposed to do with the Canaanites in the Old Testament? Get rid of them. Are you hearing me? Can you hear me? What are you supposed to do with the Canaanites? What were the Phoenicians? An abomination. There's this Canaanite woman comes to Jesus. Think of, I want you to think about this. A Canaanite woman comes to Jesus. A woman of Syrophoenicia, a Phoenician. She cries after him. 
She falls down and worship him and says, help me, Lord. He looked at her and he says, it's not right for me. He said, I, first of all, he said, I'm only sent to the house of Israel. And it's not right for me to give. Well, when he said that, I'm only sent to the house of Israel. She goes, she falls down and worship him and says, oh, but help me. And you know, when you start pulling on Father's compassion on his level, oh, but help me. He says, well, listen, it's not right for me to give the children's bread to the dogs. She said, yes, it's true. I only need a crumb. I just need a crumb. Ooh. What, an, what, what a heart's desire. What a passion. What a willingness to believe who God is. In a Canaanite, not in an Israelite, in a Canaanite, Jesus says, I know a lot of times in the scripture it uses the word oh, but this is one of the times it does. It's an exclamation mark of great emotion. Oh, great is your faith, woman. Be it unto you from this time according to your faith. You know, look at the release of God's love and mercy upon anybody who wants to believe. Yet the household wasn't believing. The household sat there doubting with all kinds of questions. Could it be? Is it possible? They weren't able to discern the time, the season and the time in which they lived in. Did you know that there are means by which we can begin to discern the time that we live in? Did you know that? Jesus says in, in Matthew chapter 16, verse 3, he says, and of course, you know, the story I just told out of Matthew chapter 15. But he says in Matthew chapter 16, he says to the Pharisees, to the Sadducees, he came asking for a sign. He said, wait a minute. You can tell what the weather is going to be. It's just that plain to you. But you can't discern the times that you're now living in. You can't recognize that this is actually the day and the time period in which these events should take place. And you know, dear people, nothing's changed about that. God has called us into a realm of walking in the Spirit that we should know and understand the time and the season that we now live in, that the Holy Spirit has actually come to show the church, come to show us what's going to happen in the future. That's one of the things that He does. He not only leads us and guides us into all truth, He not only takes everything that belongs to the Lord Jesus and everything that belongs to the Father and transfers it to us, but He also shows us things that are to come. Can you imagine what it would be like to live this kind of life every day instead of living in stinking religion? Can you imagine what it would be, what it would mean to the world for you and I to, be, to so exist in this glory? It's going to take something on the inside of you that rises up and becomes bigger than all your ideas and all of the opinions that you have and all the things that you think that you know to grab a hold of God's word and say, be it unto me even according to your word. I'm so happy that a woman said that one day, a young girl, a maiden, a virgin, a woman. Be it unto me, according to your word. Hallelujah. She called her most son, brava de la masse protosa. You know, nobody in this place has gotten a, a more intense message from God than she got. The Holy Ghost shall overshadow you and that holy thing that shall be conceived on the inside of you shall be called the Son of the living God. Give me a break. <laughs> Who's had to believe? Come on. Maybe for many of us it's so hard to believe the love of God that would so transform us to give us a new heart and to give us a new spirit, one just like His. He gave us a heart after His own heart, not a different kind of heart. A heart after the one that he shaped, when he created, when he fashioned. He barach, which is to create. He yesar, which is to fashion. And he breathed into man his very own life and made him a living being. To walk with him in all of his glory, to be set over all the works of his hands. Ha ha, la basiger, maya. Man disobeyed God, rebelled against God. Jesus, the last man, the last Adam, came 
and took care of the situation and said, no, 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 no. We're going on with the program, okay? I'm willing to become a holy embryo. I'm willing to stand in the same place that Adam stood. I'm willing to obey you. I'm willing to follow your plan of the ages and not one time transgress that I might be the access for all who will be willing to come and follow me. See, he's the deliverer. God's looking for people who want to be delivered from the hate and the sin and the wickedness and the iniquity and all the darkness that, that, that grips men's life. I heard, I was listening to an agnostic talk the other day about how wonderful the world would be if there was no God. And he looked like, he looked like death warmed over. I mean, he looked so miserable. And I, so I wanted to be able to have access to say, look, guy, this, obviously this thing, well, your belief is not working out for you. If we've got to all look like you, my goodness, it's a worse state than we could possibly imagine. But I wonder how many people on the other side look at you and me and go, my goodness, if that's life abundantly, give me a break. I'm going with the death. Are you listening to me? Hello? I want you to bear upon your shoulders the responsibility to come and follow Jesus. He's given us access into the sanctuary. He's, uh, the, door of, the door is open. We have an open sanctuary. I mean, it's far greater than an open heaven. It's an open sanctuary, and it's open to all men everywhere, no matter who you are. Even to a Canaanite, a Jebusite, Hittite, Le you know, the same as a Levite. Everybody, there is no difference. Canaanite can walk by the walk hand in hand or shoulder to shoulder with the league right and come on into the holies and holies. Unimaginable. This is the grace. We live in a day, an opportunity that God's calling to all men everywhere. Come on in. I mean, it's told to me that Gandhi said that if people would live like, if those who call themselves Christian would live like Jesus, other, all other religions would cease to exist. He's not the only one who said that. You know, people just, where, where is the reality of that which you proclaim? So you baptize in the Holy Ghost and glory, given the fullness of God, given a, a new heart, a new spirit. So where is that? So where is the evidence of it? There is no greater evidence of a transformed life than the power and ability to say no to sin. And yet we live in a, 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 a day of apostasy where people say that sin is an inevitable consequence. We live in it. There's no escape. When God says he delivered us from the law of sin and death, from the power and the reign and the terror of it. See, Jesus is a deliverer. He came to deliver those who wanted no longer to live in the ungodliness, in the world of darkness, in the world of sin and iniquity, in the world of men's abuses. Those who are done with it, they want to, I, I want heaven now. I'm done with hell. I want heaven now. I'm, I'm finished with hell. Somebody get me out of here. Huh? Imagine yourself in hell. I mean, God, Holy Ghost conviction somehow has got to come forth through our lives once again. It causes men to understand where they are and where they stand with God because light reproves darkness. In a way that goes beyond words. It's Holy Ghost conviction. I used to sit around listening to the older men of God talk about the revivals of the past when I was a little guy. I can remember five, six years old sitting around listening to many men of God sit around the late night dinner table because my dad was an evangelist at that time. And when you evangelists or evangelists, preachers, kids, you eat supper Midnight. Sometime between midnight and one o'clock in the morning, usually. S similar to what they do in Argentina. And some places in Brazil. Talk about wh why has Holy Ghost conviction left? What happened to Holy Ghost conviction? Why is it now that people sit there with stubborn looks upon their faces when before there was not a dry eye in the house? where people were crying out to God, Father, bend me. See, those are the terminology. See, what happens is people now live in a place of self-justification, which is another synonym to say self-righteousness. People live in a place of self-righteousness. They they're not willing to come in at the narrow gate and be made righteous. 
they want to live outside in self-righteousness, self-justification, say, I feel the way I do because of these reasons. I live the way I do because of these reasons. It's self-justification. It's not willing to be transformed. It's not willing to be made new. It's not being willing to be made different. Jesus says, you're not of the world, even as I'm not of the world. And we hear, we hear supposed Christians, people in the Christian religion, I like to just say it that way, because God didn't call us to no Christian religion. He called us to a relationship. Christian never came out of Jesus' mouth one time. Oneness came out of his mouth continually. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed is the name of the living God. Being in him and he, and he being in us. Him giving to us all heaven. And empowering us to receive it all. Living this life should be the most natural thing that there is. Whew. Living in love, living in kindness, living in forgiveness, living in joy, living in peace, living in enduring patience. God is an amazing, patient person. I have exercised his patience again and again. Mankind as a whole has exercised his patience. He tell you once again, no, no, that's not what I said. No, no, that's not what I said. No, no, that's not what I said. I know I've been around professors and scientists. They tell you one time, and after that, they're screaming and yelling that you didn't get it on the first go around. Because they imagine that everybody's got a photographic memory, and so they're not going to say it twice. Father, you're just so patient. You're so loving. You're so merciful. Oh, man, baba, say it, I tell you. Hagala zubra, man, for the Say it, man, I kiss you, people. He says, listen, no, 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 I've called you into my glory. No, not kind of my glory, my glory. No, 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 I've called you into an entirely different life that I've empowered you to live. Now, no, you don't have to struggle for it, work for it. No, that's not what I said. I give it to you, it's a gift. Uh, it's not a little bit. It's like rivers converging on the inside of you and busting out of you. That's kind of, that's the way my life, I've designed for my life to be expressed through you. Well, reality of it is, is this is keeping the resurrection. This is observing the resurrection of Jesus Christ. This is the true observance of the resurrection of Jesus Christ to live the life, hallelujah, that we've been raised up together with him. Paul said, if anybody's raised up together with him, if you then be raised, risen with Christ Jesus, then what you're doing is you're seeking those things, you desiring, wanting more than anything else, those things which are in the realms of the heavenly. Those things which are there at the right hand of the Father. You don't set your affections on things of this earth. Hallelujah. Basta carame she para la vefetia. Hallelujah. Si si gamblande. That's me. And it's just tell them over a day. Let's have a day. I'm on God's stupor. I'm interested in the love of day. The rivers of living water that's coming forth from the throne room of heaven. Feeling and overwhelming me with every good thing that belongs to the glorious realms of Christ Jesus. See, Peter said he's, by his divine power, that's a lot of power, by his divine power, he's given me everything. I don't know what about you, because it's according to your faith. But by his divine power, he gave me everything that pertains to life and godliness, because he's called me to live in his glory and in his excellence of character, his virtue. Hallelujah. Now all I got to do is hook up with the Holy Ghost, stop having all these doctrinal ideas in my mind about what it is supposed to be today in the 21st century. Because God's in the future. He's not in the past. It's not something from, a, you know, the, you know, the a antiquity. That's so far in the future we can't even begin to imagine it. Hallelujah. He's far more in the future than he is in the past. He's God of the past, but he's more of the God of the future. But more than he is the God of the future... He's the God of right this moment. Right this moment, right now. And it's about time you make him the God of right now. And that you begin to have an encounter with him with whom you have to do. For he's going to judge you. Because he's going to cause you into question. He's going to call you into question for how you've been willing to receive all the wonderful mercy and grace. That he's given in his humility and brokenness and lowliness. Not in his, not in his fashion of men's pride and self-exaltation he's going to serve us the master serves us whoa 
can the church begin to grab a hold of resurrection life? Can we begin to say Christ Jesus lives on the inside of me? This is the confession of faith. I, I, was, I was raised up together with him. Did you, did, were you raised up together with him? You say, how can that be? It happened 2,000 years ago. Because he is right now. He exists right now. They that come to God must believe that he exists right now. People have faith that, oh, yeah, he did. He, he parted the Red Sea. They all went over, dry land. And, oh, oh yeah, in the future. Oh, yeah, he's going to do all these things. And the heaven's coming down to earth. My goodness, it's going to be great. God's going to reign over everything. How about right now? What's he doing right now? Where's God right now? Where's the same glorious, powerful, almighty right now in your life? How do you interface with him right now? What do you believe about him right now? How do you interact with him right now? He's looking for an opportunity. They that come to him must believe that he exists right now. That he is, that he exists. That he's here right now. That's what that, that's what that phrase means in the Greek language. That he's here right now. That he exists right now. That he is, exists. He, he, he bees. He's here. Jesus said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. He said, I'm going to give you, I said, I'm going to give you the Holy Ghost. He'll always be with you. He'll be with you and in you. Always. Well, praise God, we got the Holy Ghost. We don't know where Jesus is. Wherever the Holy Ghost is, Jesus is there. Well, when do we step over into that? When do we begin to believe that? Well, how about right now? How about we just say, forget about the past, and just, that's what we're going to do right now. I'm going to receive the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ that declares He's in me and I'm in Him. That declares that I've been given the divine power. That I've been given by His divine power everything that pertains to life and godliness so that I have a treasure on the inside of me. Now, how many of you know that, that, that I'm not making these things up? I'm actually quoting Scripture uh, because I'll stop and start giving you all the passages of Scripture. I'd be happy to do that. We'll slow down. And you can just email me. Go on the website, www.abidingplace.org. Email the pastor. I'll give you the list of Scripture. Just tell me what, just tell me what service is. Tell, remind me what the subject was and We'll download those things, those things for you. Our biggest challenge to live this is because we live in, we live in a, a last day that approaches apostasy. And in reality of it is we are in apostasy by measurable degrees, which we can see and, and, and understand by the way people have now taken up the gospel message and made it less than heavenly made it less than a transformation of the power of God that gave us a new heart and new spirit and made, him one, made us one with Him. His, a gospel less than the very presence of the living God existing in us and being with us. And the Scripture tells us very clearly that because uh, iniquity will abound, the love of many shall wax cold. It'll grow cold. You know... Let me just stop here for just a minute and, and kind of let you look at some of the big challenges that we have. And, and or turn with me to Hebrews chapter 10. I think it's a great place to look. Just real quickly. I, I know people have a lot of plans on Resurrection Sunday. I hope you understand this is Resurrection Sunday. It's not Easter. Don't fight the battle. People want to do eggs and whatever. Just talk to them. Isn't it? It's a great day to be able to testify. It's a great big day to be able to share the gospel with so many different people. It's a great day to do that. While well, they're running around with their eggs and their jelly beans and their uh, marshmallow chickens, all stuff that is very unhealthy for them. And, you know, just to be again to declare the living Christ Jesus, he raised from the dead. He died and he went to hell. He, he died at Calvary's cross. So that by his blood, you and I might be purified. That we might become an altar, a purified altar, a purified temple. So God, the Holy Ghost, would come dwell in us. Even as the temple of old. Purified by the blood of God. Whoa! Purified by the light. Nothing can cleanse you. Somebody said, well, how can blood cleanse you? Well, how can water cleanse you? How can soap cleanse you? Quit getting all mystical on me, man. Huh? Because you really don't fully understand that. You just think you did because it's every, it's everyday common thing to you. Get your soap out. 
You smell better. You're clean. Kind of. But go ahead, put deodorant on as well. Please. And, and cologne will help as well. If you need. need if you have it. I mean, we'll, we'll, there's people that we go to and spend time with that they don't have cologne. We have to put like cotton, uh, uh, cotton dipped in um, something like, uh, I you know, some methylated something or other. <laughs> Stick it up in our nose so that we can handle it. And they got to do the same thing because we've got, we, we smell like soap. But, you know, that's irrelevant, really. The power of the blood of Jesus Christ, the means by which the, every stain of sin, every power of death, and every stronghold of Satan is broken off of us. It's amazing. To believe in the blood of Jesus, to believe that now his life is an open door into the sanctuary whew, so that you and I can come stand before the living God. And he says to all of us, he says, those that are far off and to those that are near, those who don't know him, those who have been alienated from him, the Canaanite, to all the people that are very near, the Levite, everybody, I give you peace, come on in. Peace, absence of all condemnation. Absence of all judgment, the removal of all condemnation, removal of all judgment, because God laid the condemnation and the judgment of us all upon the shoulders of Jesus Christ and executed his righteous judgment against it. And he bore in his, in, in his own body our sins on the tree so that we can now be dead to sin, dead, cut off, senseless to it, and alive unto his righteousness, by whose wound we were cured. We received the full therapy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Spiritually. Hallelujah. Physically. <laughs> he cleansed all. He cleansed all my iniquities. He's healed all my diseases. To grab a hold of the divine power that has been given to us and begin to live it. And then no matter what comes out against you, say no. I, no matter what virus or plague or disease or sickness begins to try to take hold of you. Or maybe it advances to some degree. No, 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 no. 